Hello. Good to see all of you and hope that everything is going well in your life as May is just starting to go out of the hourglass and we're getting ready for June. So you thought it was warm, but it's going to be a lot warmer. It's always, June seems to be one of our warmer months. I know July and August, but by August it's dry. So it's a dry heat. Uh, but you know, we'll get humidity in June and uh, not, not, not much you can do about it. You just either stay under the air conditioning or the fan or you, you know, go out. Uh, we are in chapter 15, beginning in verse 36 of the book of Acts. As we continue to trudge through the uh, messages and the, and the teaching of uh, Paul, as he goes out and does his ministry. Uh, he has done the first missionary journey. He's come back. They've had the discussion at Antioch, the big, big Antioch conference, and they decided what to do and how to instruct the Gentiles. And uh, while they didn't require them to have circumcision, what they did require was that they followed certain rules um, that the Jews had and were really good rules and uh, so that they wouldn't cause problems in the church and also so that they could live better lives. So we're going to start in verse 36. Father, thank you for looking at your word. Thank you for those who are joining with us. May this word edify us all in Jesus name. Amen. Verse 36, sometime later, Paul said, Paul said this to Barnabas, let us return to those towns where we preach the Lord's message. We could visit the believers there and we could see how they are. We could see what they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with them, but John Mark had left them in Pamphylia. He had not stayed with them until they finished their work. So Paul did not want to take him. Paul and Barnabas argued. Then they separated. Barnabas took Mark and they sailed to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas. Remember, Silas had come back to the Antioch church from the church in Jerusalem. Uh, the believers placed them in God's care. Then Paul left with Silas and Paul traveled through Syria and Cilicia. He encouraged the Christians and he made them stronger in their faith. So sometime later, it was probably several months later after the Jerusalem conference, uh, around spring, Paul and Barnabas were talking about going and they were going to go and try to strengthen the churches from the first missionary journey. Paul agreed with that. Barnabas wanted his cousin, John Mark, also called Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark, to come with them. Perhaps Barnabas wanted to give him a second chance. Uh, John Mark had left them, but Paul didn't want him to go with them uh, because I guess Paul felt like he would probably do the same thing again. Uh, it's not necessarily, some people have been very critical of Paul regarding this. Paul may have just thought that John Mark was not ready to go. Uh, in that, I might go more that direction because he does take on some people later on. But, um, you know, Paul uh, really wanted people to understand the seriousness of what they were doing. Paul and Barnabas could not agree, so Paul and Barnabas decided to part. And they went in different directions. Barnabas took Mark with him, and they came to Cyprus. That was where Barnabas was born. Paul chose Silas to go with him, so Silas went to, went, sent with him. We know that Paul and Barnabas became friends again later. In two letters, Paul wrote good things about Barnabas, 1 Corinthians 9 and Colossians 4. Uh, Paul also became friends with John Mark again. Later, he wrote that Mark had helped him in 2 Timothy 4 and in Philemon 24. Also, uh, when Paul's life was ending, he wanted Mark to be near him. So he asked for him to come to him. 2 Timothy 4.11. So there wasn't a long lasting feud here. 
Uh, we don't know why, what happened, but uh, we know that they moved on. And really, they covered more ground being in two different groups rather than in one group. Um, so we see Timothy come on here in chapter 16, verse 1. Paul went to Derby, and then he went to Lystra. A Christian called Timothy lived there. Timothy's mother was a Jewish Christian. His father was a Greek. He was uh, a Gentile. The believers at Lystra and Iconium said many good things about Timothy. Paul wanted Timothy to travel with him, so he, uh, he circumcised Timothy, which was legal. I mean, he was a rabbi member, and so rabbis could do that. He did this because of the attitude that the Jews had there. Paul and his helpers went through the towns. So Timothy needed to be circumcised so that he could work with the Jews and without any problems. Paul and his helpers went through the towns. They told the people as they went through to obey the rules that they had talked about in the Jerusalem conference. So the Christians became stronger in the faith and more people joined the church daily. So this is a positive thing. Positive things are happening for Paul and Barnabas. Uh, Timothy uh, became a chief helper of Paul. We know that Timothy's mother was called Eunice. In 2 Timothy 1.5, she probably became a believer when Paul came to Lystra before. That was two or three years earlier. Timothy was young, but the believers saw that he had a good character. His father was a Gentile, so Timothy had received a good Greek education. So he could work with Jews and Greeks, which was quite good and be very useful as he works with both groups. Uh, Timothy preaches in a lot of different places and he kind of becomes a son to Paul, son in, in the work. Uh, we may want to know why Paul circumcised Timothy. When a Jew married a pagan, their children were Jewish. That is when what the Jews said. So the Jews considered that Timothy was a Jew. Paul did not want to upset the other Jewish Christians. So he circumcised Timothy so that they would accept him. This did not mean that Paul wanted Gentiles to be circumcised. It just meant that for Timothy be able to have leadership role and work with Jewish people and Gentile people. This is what needed to happen. Okay, Paul gets the Macedonian vision in chapter 16, verses 6 through 10. Paul and his companions went through Phrygia and Galatia, and but the Holy Spirit would not let them preach the message in Asia, Asia Minor, which is what we consider to be Turkey now. So they came to the border of Mysia. Then they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not let them do that. So they traveled through or by Mysia. And they went on to Troas. That night, Paul had a vision. In the vision, he saw a man from Macedonia. He was dressed like a man from Macedonia. The man was standing there. Come over to Macedonia and help us, said the man. After Paul had this vision, we got ready. Now we're going to talk about why it's important that we see we got ready. We left for Macedonia immediately, and we decided that God had called us to preach the gospel there. These verses show that Paul was always listening to the Holy Spirit. He planned a missionary journey but he was willing to change his plans if God told him to. Paul probably wanted to continue west to Ephesus, but the Holy Spirit stopped them. Uh, we do not know how he stopped them, but Paul was stopped in the Spirit. The province called Bithynia, there were Greek cities and Jewish towns, but the Spirit of Jesus would not let them go there. The Spirit of Jesus is another name for the Holy Spirit. Paul and Silas were both prophets, and so they could they were plugged in to the Holy Spirit. Verses 9 through 10. Troas was an important port. People went there when they traveled between Asia and Macedonia. The man in the vision asked for spiritual help. Come over and help us spiritually. 
Paul knew that that message was from God. It was not Paul's plan to go to Macedonia. Far from it. Uh, he was going to go over to northern Greece, Macedonia. And that's where, if you remember your history, or if you were ever told, uh, that is where Alexander the Great came from. So they were Greek. And it was getting closer to Rome. So whereas all places he had been before, uh, the Romans were there, but in Macedonia, they would be the biggest part of what he would encounter. It was God's plan for him to go do that. In verse 10, Luke says that we did things. So Luke is now writing about events that he saw himself. The we implies that Luke went with him on Paul's journey. And perhaps he wrote a diary about it as they went. That's what we kind of think he did. Okay. Now we're going to talk about a wonderful lady in the town of Philippi who became uh, a believer. Philippi was a very Roman city. Uh, it was a place where they, uh, the people, the Romans had fought a big battle uh, back when it was uh, Anthony, Antony, uh, and uh, Octavius, who later became Augustus, the first Roman emperor. They fought there, so this was an important place because this was a place where there were a lot of military veterans. The, the uh, Romans took over this area and gave out land to military veterans. So Paul is speaking to pure D Romans at this point. Okay? We sailed from Troas straight to Samothrace. The next day we came to Neapolis. From there, we went to Philippi. Philippi is a Roman colony. It is a city in the first district in Macedonia. We stayed there for several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate and we went to a place by the river. We thought that the Jews, that the Jews met there for prayer. Some women came, we sat down and we talked to them. One of these women was Lydia, and she was the, from the city called Thyatira, which is back in Turkey. But she was there selling things, operating a business. And she sold expensive purple cloth. She worshiped God, the God. Uh, the Lord opened her spirit so that she believed Paul's message. She believed the gospel. She and all the people in her house received baptism. They all accepted this message. Afterwards, she invited us, Paul, Luke, Silas, into her home. You may think that I really have faith in the Lord. If you do not think so, then come and stay at my house, she said. So she persuaded us to accept her invitation. The wind was blowing the right direction for the travelers as they crossed the sea. They crossed it in just a matter of two days. And uh, later on the way back, it took about five days. So you had to go with the wind there. The wind took care of them. And they sailed to all these different places. Philippi was about 10 miles away from the coast. Um, we see Luke keeping a real accurate record of where they went and what they did. So... Verse 12, the Romans had divided Macedonia into four districts with different rulers. And Philippi was a city in the first district in Macedonia. is an important city, but it was not the capital. Thessalonica was the capital of Macedonia. Philip was on a long road called the Ignatian Way. This road linked Asia with the West, or it linked Turkey and uh, northern Israel and all those and anything um, east of there, it linked them all to Rome. Because remember, Romans built great, great roads. Luke writes that Philippi was a Roman colony. A Roman colony used Roman law. Romans governed it. It is important to understand that. We need to remember it because some difficult things are going to happen to Paul. And he's not under uh, Jewish law. He is under Roman law. So this will pay, play a part later on in our story. Verse 13, 
there did not seem to be a synagogue in Philippi. To set up a synagogue, there had to be ten men or more. This was the Jewish rule. Paul sat down with the women and taught them. Uh, they all prayed together. They could do that, but they could not have a synagogue unless there were ten men. This was very unusual because the Jews did not usually teach women. They thought that men were cleverer and more important. Okay? I didn't say that. Okay? But uh, that is what they thought. And in his gospel, Luke tells how Jesus often spoke to women. Jesus cared about women as much as he cared about men because women have souls and men have souls. And that's what he came to say. Ancient times, people uh, did not consider women as important as men. But Luke shows that women are very important to God and they're very important to the gospel. And just like today, women are very much a part of what the gospel does because most of our churches would fall apart if it weren't for the women. Uh, Lydia worshipped God means that she was a god fearer. The Lord opened her spirit by means of the Holy Spirit, and as the Holy Spirit worked in her, uh, the Holy Spirit opens up their heart to understand the gospel. But we must tell uh, we must tell people the good news about Jesus. You may not be able to do this very well, or you may think that it's too difficult to do. But we must remember this. Paul said that the gospel comes not only with words, but it also comes with power, and it comes with the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 1.5 uh, Verse 15, she and all the people in her house means her family, and it also means people who worked for her. So when she brought Paul in, she gave Paul the opportunity to speak to everybody in the house, as we saw with uh, Peter and Cornelius. Uh, God spoke to them, and we'll also see some other opportunities here. Uh, the whole household, which in Greek is the word oikos, which means not only the family, the physical family, but the servants and those who are part of the household. So there was a lot of that that went on. Uh, she accepted Christ as her Savior, and it grew and it became a large church. Philippians 1, 1. It became a very blessed church and a good church. It is the, the uh, one that Paul wrote to uh, that he had a lot of joy in and they took care of him. It's Their members were very generous as we find out in Philippians 4, 15 and 16. Okay, so next week we are going to see power of God and the Holy Spirit be used in Philippi and in the process uh, get Paul and Silas in a lot of trouble <laughs> which often when the Holy Spirit works the devil tries to stop it by using his means but Paul continues and uh, he and Silas set a good example and do some amazing things I hope you enjoy that and enjoy the studies you know Paul is going to be working in the Gentile world in uh, the rest of Acts more than in the Jewish world. And he's going to, again, Paul had the, like Timothy, had uh, kind of a mixed parentage, mixed heritage. And so they were able to work in both fields, which was great because it was a very, what we call cosmopolitan. Okay. So can I encourage you today? Uh, will you pray for the believers and the people of Uvalde today. Today is the year anniversary, especially the parents of the children and uh, the families of those, those teachers who lost their lives. Uh, I don't know why God allows these things to happen. None of us do. Uh, we do know that we all have free will. So we'll talk about that at another time, but, you know, be in prayer for those families and uh, be in prayer uh, for the services that will be held tonight, that they will bring comfort. And um, we pray for that. Okay. Thank you for taking time today to be with me and read more about the Bible. I hope that you'll be praying for me as I prepare to teach the kids in Vacation Bible School.
Okay? So God bless you. God continue to work in your life. Have a good day.